Hello, this is Dennis Polis. Welcome to another in the series of Open Philosophy videos. In this video, we will be discussing the topic of randomness. And in particular, we will be considering the possibility of ontological randomness. The philosophical importance of randomness lies principally in two areas. First, atheists like to argue that evolution shows that order can emerge out of chaotic randomness. Secondly, a number of thinkers have tried to use randomness especially quantum randomness, to explain free will. Statistical probability seems straightforward. Its foundation is equal likelihood. Place 50 white balls and 50 red balls in an urn and mix them. The probability of picking a red ball without looking is 50%. Roll a six-sided die. The probability of any side coming up is one-sixth. This is because we have no reason to believe one outcome is more likely than another. As Laplace pointed out, behind this apparent randomness, there is nothing random at all. He writes, An intelligence knowing, at a given instant of time, all the forces acting in nature, as well as the momentary positions of all things of which the universe consists, would be able to comprehend the motions of the largest bodies of the world and those of the smallest atoms in one single formula, provided it were sufficiently powerful to subject all data to analysis. To it, nothing would be uncertain. Both future and past would be present before its eyes. As Laplace implies, if we look at the die roll in detail, specifying its exact angle of initial contact, velocity, angular momentum, coefficient of friction, and so on, we could calculate the outcome. Nothing is intrinsically random about a die roll. Since we are ignorant of these details, the outcome is random for us. Again, supposing that the top layer in our urn has all white balls, Mary knows this, so for her the probability of picking a white ball is 100%, and the outcome is determinate. For John, who has not looked, the draw is random. His information allows no prediction. The probability is 50% for him. Why is it 50% for John and 100% for Mary? The only difference is their knowledge. Let us consider another example, a binary message which is sent and later received. Claude Shannon, the founder of information theory, defined information as a reduction in possibility, that is, logical possibility, not possible existence. Once the message is sent, it is what it is, and no longer possibly something else. At the receiving end, we do not know what it is. As we receive each bit, each zero or one, our ignorance is reduced, and with it, the probability that the message could be other than it is. When there is just one bit left, there is a 50% chance to us that it could be the real message, and a 50% chance that it could be like the real message, but with the last bit different. All the while, the message remains unchanged. The probabilities we calculate have nothing to do with the real message, and everything to do with our knowledge and ignorance. Thus, probability is not an objective property of nature, but it describes the subject-object relation of knowledge. To be relative to knowledge is to be relative to ignorance, so probability is a function of ignorance. When our ignorance ceases, probability goes away and becomes certainty. Physical processes are random to the degree that we humans cannot calculate a determinate outcome. If we can calculate it, the outcome is deterministic for us. If we cannot, it is random for us. Being deterministic or random is not an ontological, but an epistemological property, one having to do with our knowledge. There will always be a definite outcome. The next ball will be white or red. The atom will decay in the next minute, or it will not. We are rarely able to predict this, so for us, it is random. This is as true in quantum theory as in classical physics. The difference is that in quantum theory, we cannot determine the initial conditions, while in the classical case, we can. The only random processes in quantum theory are observations. And the reason that they are random is because we do not know the initial state of our observing apparatus. Mm -hmm.